Hello students, today we are going to deal with the topic of meaning, history and importance of visual communication. The communication which is done through a visual aid is called visual communication, such as facial expression, gesture, eye contact, signals, map, chart, poster, etc. It also includes graphic design, illustration and animation, books, print, magazines, screen-based media, interactive web design, short film design for advertising, promotion, corporate identity and packaging design, etc. Visual presentation of information and data is having an increasing impact on our practical life. In spite of having impact on our life, visual communication is not alone sufficient for exchanging information. For example, to indicate danger, we use red sign. To indicate no smoking, we use an image showing a lighted cigarette with a cross mark on it, etc. The Cro-Magnons was found in the history that the Cro-Magnons form the earliest known European examples of Homo sapiens from 40,000 years ago, chromosomally descending from population of the Middle East. Cro-Magnons lived from about 40,000 to 10,000 years ago in the Upper Paleolithic period of the Pleistocene Epoch. When they arrived in Europe about 40,000 years ago, they brought with them sculpture, engraving, painting, body ornamentation, music and the painstaking decoration of utilitarian objects. Cave or rock paintings are paintings painted on cave or rock walls and ceilings usually dating to prehistoric times. Rock paintings are made since the Upper Paleolithic 40,000 years ago. It is widely believed that the paintings are the work of respected elders or shamans. Now we will discuss about pictograms, ideograms and logograms. Let's see pictograms. A pictogram or pictograph is a symbol representing a concept, object, activity, place or event by illustration. Pictography is a form of writing whereby ideas are transmitted through drawing. It is the basis of cuneiform and hieroglyphs. They were used by various ancient cultures all over the world since around 9000 BC and began to develop into logographic writing systems around 5000 BC. Pictograms are still in use as the main medium of written communication in some non-literate cultures in Africa, the Americas and Oceania and are often used as simple symbols by most contemporary cultures. An ideogram or ideograph is a graphical symbol that represents an idea rather than a group of letters arranged according to the phonemes of a spoken language as is done in alphabetic languages. Examples of ideograms include wayfinding signage in airports and other environments where many people may not be familiar with the language of the place they are in as well as Arabic numerals and mathematical notation which are used worldwide regardless of how they are pronounced in different languages. The term ideogram is commonly used to describe logographic writing systems such as Egyptian hieroglyphs and Chinese characters. However, symbols in logographic systems generally represent words or morphemes rather than pure ideas. A logogram or logograph is a single grapheme which represents a word or a morpheme. This stands in contrast to other writing systems such as alphabets where each symbol primarily represents a sound or a combination of sounds. The history of the alphabet starts in ancient Egypt. The first pure alphabets emerged around 2000 BC in ancient Egypt as a representation of language developed by Semitic workers in Egypt. 
but by then alphabetic principles had already been inculcated into Egyptian hieroglyphs for a millennium. Most other alphabets in the world today either descended from this one discovery or were directly inspired by its design, including the Phoenician alphabet and Greek alphabet. This was one of the darkest periods known to mankind. In medieval Europe, pestilence and plague, darkness and fear, witch hunts and illiteracy roam the land. It is a world where most people seldom leave their place of birth for any distance longer than 10 miles, where few people even live beyond the age of 30. In this inhospitable milieu, secluded in the scriptoria of cold monasteries, under the light of feeble oil lamps, mitten against the biting cold, some of the greatest book designers that ever lived created some of the most beautiful books the world has ever seen. We call these beautiful books illuminated manuscripts. Let's now talk about Incunabula. Incunabula is a book, single sheet or image that was printed not handwritten before the year 1501 in Europe. These are usually very rare and fragile items whose nature can only be verified by experts. The origin of the word is the Latin incunabula for swaddling clothes used by extension for the infancy or early stages of something. The first recorded use of incunabula as a printing term is in a pamphlet by Bernard von Malincroft of the rise and progress of the typographic art published in Cologne in 1639, which includes the phrase prima typography in Cunabula, the first infancy of printing. The term came to denote the printed books themselves from the late 17th century. There are two types of incunabula, xylographic, made from a single carved or sculpted block for each page, and the typographic, made with movable type on a printing press in the style of John Gutenberg. Many authors reserve the term incunabulum for the typographic ones only. The end date for identifying a book as an incunabulum is convenient but was chosen arbitrarily. It does not reflect any notable developments in the printing process around the year 1500. Incunabula usually refers to the earliest printed books completed at a time when some books were still being hand copied. The gradual spread of printing ensured that there was great variety in the texts chosen for printing and the styles in which they appeared. Many early typefaces were modeled on local forms of writing or derived from the various European forms of Gothic script but there were also some derived from documentary scripts, such as most of Caxton's types. And particularly in Italy, types modeled on humanistic hands. These humanistic typefaces are often used today, barely modified in digital form. Visual communication is a communication through a visual aid and is described as the conveyance of ideas and information in forms that can be read or looked upon. Visual communication is part or whole relies on vision and is primarily presented or expressed with two dimensional images. It includes science, typography, drawing, graphic design, illustration, industrial design, advertising, animation, color and electronic resources. It also explores the idea that a visual message accompanying text has a greater power to inform, educate or persuade a person or audience. Visual communication is through visual aid. The evaluation of a good visual communication design is mainly based on measuring comprehension by the audience, not on personal aesthetic and or artistic preference as there are no universally agreed upon principles of beauty and ugliness. Excluding two-dimensional images, there are other ways to express information visually, gestures and body language, 
animation and film. Visual communication by email, a textual medium is commonly expressed with ASCII art, emotions and embedded digital images. The term visual presentation is used to refer to the actual presentation of information through a visible medium such as text or images. Recent research in the field has focused on web design and graphically oriented usability. Graphic designers also use methods of visual communication in their professional practice. Visual communication on the World Wide Web is perhaps the most important form of communication that takes place while users are surfing the internet. When experiencing the web, one uses the eyes as the primary sense and therefore the visual presentation of a website is very important for users to understand the message or of the communication taking place. Visual communication uses artistic license to communicate thoughts and ideas through sight. People skilled in visual communications commonly work in advertising, web design, journalism and publishing. And in many cases in their own studios to teach their craft. They use simple and advanced techniques to get their message across. Everything from pencils to computers. Most people get a college degree or attend a specialized school to learn their craft. Graphic designers plan and create marketing materials that communicate visually. They work in a variety of settings including publishing companies, advertising films and corporations where they assist with advertising campaigns and business promotions. Graphic designers also develop brochures press packets and fundraising programs. Some choose to work alone and freelance for clients. Many graphic designers earn college degrees and stay current on the latest software programs. Artists work in many creative fields such as advertising, public relations and set design. Others are employed as cartoonists, illustrators, art directors, and interior decorators. While many artists work for someone else, many still create their own artwork and sell it to supplement their income. Many also teach in schools and give private lessons. Artists often specialize in sculpture, watercolor, oil illustration, pastels, pencils, pens, clay or computer animation. Photographers tell stories with their pictures to capture and to record major events for future generations. Photographers spend years learning their craft. Photographers typically earn a college degree or complete specialized training at a photography school or art institute. Many are self-employed and earn a living photographing individuals and special family occasions such as weddings. Others work as photojournalists or crime scene photographers affiliated with a police department. Professionals skilled in multimedia have solid knowledge and understanding of all forms of visual communication in order to produce cutting edge communication pieces for a client or business. For example, in order to put together an engaging company website to attract page hits and customers, a web page must contain high quality photography, attractive graphic design, original artwork and in some cases an attention grabbing video. Visual aids are often used to help audiences of informative and persuasive speeches understand the topic being presented. Visual aids can play a large role in how the audience understands and takes in information that is presented. There are many different types of visual aids that range from handouts to PowerPoints. The type of visual aid a speaker uses depends on their preference and the information they are trying to present. 
Each type of visual aid has pros and cons that must be evaluated to ensure it will be beneficial to the overall presentation. Before incorporating visual aids into speeches, the speaker should understand that if used incorrectly, the visual will not be an aid but a distraction. Planning ahead is important when using visual aids. It is necessary to choose a visual aid that is appropriate for the material and audience. The purpose of the visual aid is to enhance the presentation. Trackboard or whiteboard. Trackboards and whiteboards are very useful visual aids, particularly when more advanced types of media are unavailable. They are cheap and also allow for much flexibility. The use of trackboards or whiteboards is convenient, but they are not a perfect visual aid. Often, using this medium as an aid can create confusion or boredom, particularly if a student who is not familiar with how to properly use visual aids attempts to draw on a board while they are speaking. They detract time and attention from their actual speech. A poster is a very simple and easy visual aid. Posters can be display charts, graphs, pictures, or illustrations. The biggest drawback of using a poster as a visual aid is that often a poster can appear unprofessional. Since a poster board paper is relatively flimsy, often the paper will bend or fall over. The best way to present a poster is to hang it up or tape it to a wall. Handouts can also display charts, graphs, pictures or illustrations. An important aspect of the use of a handout is that a person can keep a handout with them long after the presentation is over. This can help the person better remember what was discussed. Passing out handouts, however, can be extremely distracting once a handout is given out. It might potentially be difficult to bring back your audience's attention. The person who receives the handout might be tempted to read what is on the paper, which will keep them from listening to what is the speaker saying. If using a handout, the speaker distributes the handout right before you reference it. Distributing handouts is acceptable in a lecture that is an hour or two, but in a short lecture of five to 10 minutes, a handout should not be used. A video can be a great visual aid and attention grabber. However, a video is not a replacement for an actual speech. There are several potential drawbacks to playing a video during a speech or lecture. First, if a video is playing that includes audio, the speaker will not be able to talk. Also, if the video is very exciting and interesting, it can make what the speaker is saying appear boring and uninteresting. The key to showing a video during a presentation is to make sure to transition smoothly into the video and to only show very short clips. There are several types of projectors. These include slide projectors, PowerPoint presentations, overhead projectors, and computer projectors. Slide projectors are the oldest form of projectors and are no longer used. PowerPoint presentations are very popular and are often used. Overhead projectors are still used but are somewhat inconvenient to use. In order to use an overhead projector, a transparency must be made of whatever is being projected onto the screen. This takes time and costs money. Computer or LCD projectors are the most technologically advanced projectors. When using a LCD projector, pictures and slides are easily taken right from a computer, either online or from a saved file, and are blown up and shown on a large screen. Though LCD projectors are technologically advanced, they are not always completely reliable because technological breakdowns are not uncommon of the computers of today. Mm -hmm. 
PowerPoint presentations can be an extremely useful visual aid, especially for longer presentations. For 5 to 10 minute presentations, it is probably not worth the time or effort to put together a PowerPoint. For longer presentations, however, PowerPoints can be a great way to keep the audience engaged and keep the speaker on track. A potential drawback of using a PowerPoint is that it usually takes a lot of time and energy to put together. There is also the possibility of a computer malfunction which can mess up the flow of a presentation. Modern world became more visualized in every aspect due to the high influence of media. Visual communication is a communication in which pictures, colors and graphics are used. A skull and two crossbones shows the meaning of danger. So, visual communication is a communication where the ideas and information can be read or viewed through the means of visual aid. Let's take a look at advantages of visual communication. Nowadays, most of the business organizations are using visual techniques to present the information. It is becoming very popular day by day. Visual presentation is beneficial for many reasons. Effective for illiterate receiver. If the receivers are illiterate, the visual communication will be more effective to exchange information. They can easily understand the information that is presented visually. Helps in oral communication. Visual techniques can be used with oral communication. Oral communication becomes more meaningful if graphs, pictures and diagrams are used with it. Easy explanation. Everyone can explain the meaning of it very easily. Easy explanation has made the visual techniques more popular. Simple presentation. Complex information, data and figures can be easily presented very simply on graphs pictures and diagrams. Another advantage of visual communication is it helps in quick decisions. Visual communication helps to take quick decision so management prefers visual techniques to communicate with others. Popularity is another advantage of visual communication. Visual communication is very much popular because people do not like much speech and long explanation rather than a chat of a diagram. Other advantages of visual communication. Artful presentation adds impact to the information, quicker understanding. Let us now discuss about disadvantages of visual communication. The first disadvantage of visual communication is it's very costly. The visual methods of communication are more costlier than those of other methods. To draw maps, chats, diagram is costly affair. That is why only large company or organizations can use this technique. Complex presentation. Sometimes visual presentation of information becomes complex. The receivers cannot understand the meaning of the presentation. Another disadvantage of visual communication. Incomplete method. This technique is considered as an incomplete method. Visual presentation is not sufficient to communicate effectively and clearly but also it can be successfully used with oral communication. Next, wastage of time. Sometimes visual techniques take much time to communicate, whereas oral communication takes no time to exchange information. The other disadvantage of visual communication is difficult to understand. Difficult to understand and requires a lot of repetitions in visual communication. Since it uses gestures, facial expressions, eye contact, touch, etc. for communicating with others which may not be understandable for the simple and foolish people. Visual communication can be a problem for general readers. General people does not prefer to communicate through visual communication with others. Sometimes it cannot create an impression upon people or listeners. It is less influential and cannot be used everywhere. The other disadvantages are ambiguity, situational problem, delays in taking decision. The primary tool by which man has visualized ideas is through the usage of writing and by extension type. Writing and type is the visual manifestation of the spoken word.
and words are what we communicate with. Thus, it is no overstatement when we say that type is the essence of visual communication and by extension of visual communication design. Where it is present is simply the single most important element that you put on a page since it inherently carries the essence of communication and communication is what our subject of study as graphic or multimedia designers is all about. Thus, the history of visual communication, that is, the history of the visualization of the spoken word, will largely follow the development of typographic systems with a special focus on the Latin typographic system, given that this is the one that we are operating under. Although the primary focus will be on typographic elements and methodologies, such as illustration, illumination, photography, shapes, color, etc. as and where they pertain to the essence of the subject. We have come to the end of meaning, history and importance of visual communication. Do you have any questions? Yes ma'am, I am Keithi, I have one question. We had heard the word Sanji pictogram while Commonwealth Games in India. May I know what is Sanji? Good question. Sanji is a traditional form of artwork created by paper cutting stencils which are used to decorate palaces and temples for celebrations. They have been for centuries. The word Sanji is derived from Sanja meaning dressing up or beautifying. They were used to dress up Delhi for Commonwealth Games. Any more questions? Now we have discussed about meaning, history and importance of visual communication. Thank you.